You might feel that flying your drone for real estate projects for $100 a day isn't rewarding. But what if I told you you could charge $1,000 or even $2,000 a day to fly your drone? Well, inside of this free course, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about drone surveying. And stay tuned until the end because I'm going to show you the secret to creating high value deliverables that go beyond photos or videos and actually provide real value to your clients. Hi, my name is Rami Tamimi and since 2018, I have been a university instructor teaching surveying to university students. I was also awarded the Younger Geospatial Professional Award in 2022, presented by GeoWeek and LiDAR News. And today I'm giving you my master course for drone surveying absolutely for free. This one hour course is gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on what kind of drone we use in surveying, how to establish high accuracy survey control, planning and operating a drone mapping mission, and then processing that data, ensuring the accuracy of your work, and creating deliverables that will make you more money and actually provide real value to your clients. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to cover is understanding drones for surveying. Now I'm assuming many of you have gotten your FAA part 107. Just like any commercial drone operation, in order to do drone surveying, you have to have your part 107 license. Even if you are a surveyor, the FAA makes no exceptions. So you have to have your 107 in order to do drone surveying. So if a survey company doesn't have a drone pilot, you may be a favorable contractor to them if you understand how to do drone surveying. Now, there are many drones that can be used for surveying. If you're just starting out and you're looking for a budget-friendly drone, then I would recommend the Phantom 4 or the Mavic 2. These drones are fairly inexpensive and you can buy them on Amazon. Now, while these drones do have a decent camera, they do have a linear rolling shutter or an electronic shutter. I'll explain in a minute what that is, but this does affect the quality of the imagery. Now, this doesn't mean you can't use these drones you'll just have to fly a little bit slower and only fly smaller sites for someone that's just starting out and doesn't have a lot of money if you've gotten your 107 this could be a decent option to get started now when it comes to an intermediate drone i would recommend the mavic 3 enterprise and this is the drone right here this is what i use on a daily basis and i recommend this drone to anyone that's starting out and is willing to spend a little bit more money you can pick one of these up for less than ten thousand dollars and as you'll soon learn the sensors that come with this drone make it a very desirable option for drone surveying. Now this camera sensor right here is a 20 megapixel mechanical shutter camera. And the main difference between a mechanical shutter camera and a linear rolling shutter camera is the way that the shutter operates in order to capture an image. A mechanical global shutter camera blacks out the entire scene before capturing the image, making the entire image captured at the same time. Whereas a rolling linear shutter rolls the shutter while the image is taken. And so if your payload is moving like a drone while you're capturing the image, then you may experience some motion blurness. And this affects the quality and accuracy of your data when you're doing drone surveying. This may work really well for someone who's just taking random real estate pictures, but if you're doing high-end work like drone surveying, you're going to have to get a mechanical shutter camera. It's just the best way to do it. The other great thing about the Mavic 3 Enterprise is this sensor right here. This is an RTK antenna, providing this drone with centimeter level accuracy when collecting imagery. Now, every image you get out of a drone has a GPS geotag attached to that image. The accuracy generally ranges between three and five meters, but with RTK, you can achieve centimeter level accuracy. This allows us to do drone surveying by achieving a higher level of accuracy when collecting the data in comparison to an entry level drone. Now, real time kinematic or RTK corrections is a method used to achieve real time corrections to the drone's GPS position. So having this antenna allows us to do this, which is just one more reason why the Mavic 3 Enterprise is a great great drone for survey mapping. Some of the more advanced level drones include the DJI Matrice 350 RTK and the Wingtra 1 Gen 2. Now these drones are classified as enterprise drones and generally run between $30,000 and $100,000. The big advantage with these types of drones is that you can remove the payload. So while the camera on the Mavic 3 Enterprise is attached and it cannot be removed, on the Matrice 350 and the Wingtra 1, you can swap and change the sensor that on the drone, giving you the ability to use 42 and 60 megapixel cameras, LiDAR sensors, multi-spectral imaging, as well as thermal sensing. Now let's talk about the science 
of photogrammetry and how it has become a game changer in the surveying industry. Now photogrammetry utilizes imagery in order to create a 3D model by utilizing the focal point of several images and reconstructing the scene in which we are collecting data. That means while our drone is flying in the air and just taking pictures for us, it's important that we have a clear and visible image every single time so that the photogrammetry software that we process all of our images into can generate an accurate 3D model. In addition to creating the 3D model, photogrammetry ties georeferencing into the image. Georeferencing relates the model somewhere on Earth. So while we are collecting data, it's important to use that GPS information to know where we are on Earth in order to georeference the data after we process it. And so now I've mentioned GPS several times, but you may have also heard of GNSS. And so you might be asking yourself, what's the difference between GPS and GNSS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. Essentially, this is the American satellite constellation. So all of the American satellites that are orbiting around Earth fall under GPS. Now GPS is a part of GNSS. GNSS stands for the Global Navigation Satellite Systems. GNSS is a collection of satellite systems from all across the world. So regardless of which country that satellite comes from, it is a part of GNSS, and that includes American GPS. Some other satellite systems include the Russian GLONASS system, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Russian name, the European Galileo system, as well as the Chinese Baidu system. These four countries make up the largest satellite constellations inside of GNSS. So GNSS receivers like this one or the one that's built into the drone use all of these satellites to establish their position here on Earth. So how does this GNSS receiver achieve centimeter level accuracy? Through the use of RTK. So let me break down what RTK is. In order to get RTK corrections, you are going to need three segments. The first is the space segment. These are your satellites that are up in the sky. You must have a clear, visible sight to these satellites from your receivers. The second is the control segment. This is a static point here on Earth that observes the satellites up in the sky over a known point. Now since you know where the base station is located, all of the observations it gets from the satellites will have error. And these errors are then controlled by the base station and sent over to correct the position of the user segment. And so the user segment can be a GNSS receiver like this one or a drone like this one that is moving constantly collecting data and is connected to a base station receiving corrections for their position providing us with centimeter level accuracy. Now it's important to note that both the base station and the rover need to have clear visibility to the satellites in order to have a fixed solution. So for your RTK corrections to be fixed, you need ample satellite visibility and a connection between the base and rover. If you don't have satellite visibility, but you do have a connection between base and rover, then you have what we call a float solution. A float solution generally has about one meter of error, but is definitely not survey grade accuracy. And if you were to have ample satellite but no connection between the base and the rover, then you would have a single solution. And these are the typical GPS accuracies that you get with your phone or any single solution device, about three to five meters. And that's why we only collect data using a fixed solution RTK, giving us centimeter level accuracy for our position. So now that you have your drone picked out, and you understand how GNSS receivers work, giving us centimeter level accuracy, the next thing we're going to cover is ground control points. Ground control points, or GCPs, are used to aid us in increasing the accuracy of our drone surveys. By using targets like this one with high contrasting colors, we are going to be able to measure on the ground different positions that will give us coordinates for ground control points that we can georeference to our data. Now we'll go over georeferencing in the software at the end of this course, but basically what we're doing is identifying the center of this target 
in our photogrammetry software. So each image will show this target from an aerial perspective and we will identify the survey coordinates of each of these targets by selecting the pixel of each image that corresponds with the center of the target. This, along with high accuracy geotags for our imagery, will give us the maximum level of accuracy necessary for drone surveying. Now, in addition to ground control points, you probably have heard of a term known as checkpoints. The main difference between ground control points and checkpoints is that ground control points influence the accuracy of the data set. So I include ground control points to help improve my accuracy. However, checkpoints are used to validate the accuracy of the data. Therefore, we don't actually use checkpoints to influence our data. We just simply georeference their positions and then compare the results between our 3D model and the coordinates that we measured with the GNSS receiver. This will help us establish the accuracy of our data. And again, We'll go through all of this in the software later on in this course. You're gonna learn everything about using RTK drones, setting up high accuracy survey control, creating point clouds in 3D models, and creating CAD models, giving you a higher quality deliverable for your clients. Just click on the link below and let's get started doing drone surveying.